Welcome to the Post Game Tailgate, a weekly look at the world of college football. And a weekly look at blind luck, over the head, goal line passes for touchdowns. And this week, we, we actually have one to show. Bethel College! Anyway, my name is Dan Rubenstein, and here's what we learned this week. Dear Arizona, there couldn't possibly be anything more embarrassing than have your fans jump over barricades before the game actually ends, and then have your team lose in overtime. Or more embarrassing than after the game ends, throwing full water bottles at the opposing team's sidelines and giving a cheerleader a concussion. Nothing's more embarrassing than that, right? Right? The most impressive team Saturday may have been Florida, who throttled Florida International 62-3 in Gainesville. Let's back up a second here. Florida's now so bored with the challenge of domestic teams that they're now scheduling internationally. Now that's SEC scheduling, baby! Yale head coach Tom Williams is coming under fire for a late game 4th and 22 fake punt with the lead in their game against Harvard on Saturday. Soon after, Yale lost 14-10. If anyone is looking for somebody to blame, Williams said, blame this guy right here as Williams motioned towards a nearby sophomore just minding his own business. After a week of allegations that head coach Mark Mangino was verbally abusive towards his own players, Kansas got worked over by Texas 51-20 in Austin. Surprisingly though, after the game, Mangino was collected, respectful, and supportive. No, I'm just kidding, he was probably it. In college football's biggest and most important rivalry, Ohio State beat Michigan 21-10 on Saturday. The win was a polarizing one with half of college football fans thinking, okay, and, and the other half thinking, so what? So what? In a somewhat minor upset, Cal beat Stanford in the big game. This guy though is so excited, he's immediately changing all of his lyrics to better suit the Bears. Just about as funky as you can be. Shane Vereen. In a close game against Ole Miss, LSU horribly mismanaged their last drive with quarterback Jordan Jefferson inexplicably trying to spike the ball with only a second left on the clock. And in an attempt to better understand how Les Miles could let so much time come off the clock before calling a timeout before the previous play, we now take a look at Things Les Miles Does. I will have the... Turkey sandwich! Turkey sandwich! Turkey sandwich! Turkey sandwich! Huh. <laughs> Listen, I just, I want to tell you, I love. You! I love you! I love you! I love you! Now that the BCS has hired the PR company of Ari Fleischer, the former press secretary to George W. Bush, we're now only allowed to ask the BCS computer one question this week, but we're gonna make it a good one. Dan, I'm ready for action. Okay, what do you say to those people who say that your formula leaves out smaller, deserving schools like Boise State and TCU from the national championship race? Mission accomplished. The BCS computer, everybody. And really, any time a talking computer and Counting Crows singer Adam Duritz both appear on an episode, I know that it's all the time I'm willing to give you this week. I'm Dan Rubenstein. I'll see you next week.